very deep under these bone dry high plains in a covert section of a massively hardened centrifuge facility a team is hard at work they are members of a breakaway faction of the country's security forces and they are busy enriching 40 kilograms of uranium by july 3rd they achieve their target of 90 percent enrichment and then transfer the uranium to a nearby secret lab where another team of technicians assembles it into a crude nuclear bomb on august 31 they finish their work they put the bomb in a packing crate labeled agricultural equipment and transport it to a nearby airfield where it is stored in a warehouse two weeks later it is removed and loaded onto an aircraft with civilian air cargo markings. It flies to Dubai, where the crate is transferred, along with other goods and equipment, to a global air transport freighter. Destination, Washington, D.C. The plane lands at Washington Dulles International Airport at 2.47 a.m. on September the 15th. By late afternoon, the crate is delivered to a warehouse in the southeast part of the district. Then, before daybreak, on September the 17th, the bomb is removed from the crate and loaded onto a delivery truck. Several hours later, an American citizen eases the truck out into traffic. She drives it to a location on Pennsylvania Avenue, midway between the White House and the Capitol building. At 11.09 a.m., she stops in the middle of traffic, climbs down onto the street, and triggers the detonator. The bomb explodes with a power of 15 kilotons. There are more than 80,000 instant deaths, including the president, the vice president, the speaker of the house, and the 320 members of Congress present when the bomb goes off. There are also more than 100,000 seriously wounded and virtually no place to treat them. Telecommunication facilities throughout the greater Washington area have gone down. Soon, cable news is broadcasting scenes of vast devastation from the Capitol. A short time later, all major news outlets report receiving an identical message. The message claims that five more bombs are hidden in five different cities across the country. It says one of these bombs will be set off each week for the next five weeks, unless all American troops based overseas are ordered to return immediately to the U.S. homeland. The nation is hurled into panic. Everything begins shutting down. Within a half hour, the stock market drops more than 70% before trading is halted. From coast to coast, Masses of people begin to stream out of cities, no matter their size or location. There is widespread gridlock. Cell phone systems are soon overwhelmed and calls cannot go through. Internet access is impossible in many regions and the nation is now in a constitutional crisis. By succession, the Senate President Pro Tem is now the country's president, but he is being treated for pancreatic cancer far from the Capitol at the Mayo Clinic. The Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, both of whom were testifying to the House Armed Services Committee on their recent budget request, are dead as well. Martial law is declared in Washington and surrounding regions, and the next day, the entire country. There is widespread looting and violence in many cities. Federal and National Guard troops are mustered. Soon there are reports of troops firing on crowds. There are increasing numbers of reports of crowds rioting against immigrants and foreigners. Within days, the military begins to construct large detention centers around the country. 